Welcome to our garden. We are going to be doing a complete tour of our garden, including our high tunnel today. Today also happens to be summer solstice. So it is June 20th, 2021. Where we're at in Alaska, that means that we are at 19 hours and 45 minutes of sunlight. It is amazing. Even though we don't have sunlight the whole day, those last few hours are actually fairly light. It doesn't really ever get completely dark. It's about 9.30 right now, and you can tell that it is still Still very light out, really, really cool stuff. We're gonna be going over our plants and show you how they're doing early in the season. We only have about 110 days to grow all of our crops here. Very, very shortened season. We start a lot of our plants indoors. We're very big on trying to start most of our stuff from seed and we like to grow a lot of our own food. We're in zone 3B. Our garden is about 40 feet by 60 feet, so it's a it's a pretty nice size and with the raised rows we really cramp a lot of stuff in here to get the highest production we also have a high tunnel i predominantly try to do organic gardening although i don't really get hung up on that word you can probably see there are a lot of weeds behind me that's because we bring in manure i'm a big fan of manure i'm a big fan of bugs and i am a big fan of taking care of our soil that's one of the most important things to me in this garden the weeds honestly don't really prove that big of an issue because the crops grow so well too. So that's just a little bit of my philosophy as far as gardening. We are going to get started on the tour now. If you haven't seen any of our videos before, this is our high tunnel next to me. It is a 12 by 36 that we built a few years back. It's doing great. We've got the thicker plastic on it and it's UV treated. We use some top railing, so it's very, very sturdy as far as the snow goes. We're gonna head inside and start there. This is one of my favorite spots to come every day. You can see it's like a green oasis and it's just the beginnings. This is June. So things are gonna get about double in size, very packed in here. First row is all of our tomatoes. Now I'm still doing some troubleshooting to figure out what varieties I like, but I do try to grow predominantly determinate, the bushier kinds and I feel like those are just better varieties for here for that short condensed season we have. We've got a bunch of plants, it's like 60, and we have some little strings that help them so they don't get too off kilter, but I, I do sometimes tie them up to this top cable that we have if they need that. I'm super happy with how well the tomatoes are doing this year. They're very green and I cut back actually on the nitrogen. I specifically put a lot of phosphorus because I want them to flower very well. We just have heavier nitrogen in our soil with all the manure. Right next to me, I have a volunteer borage and I don't plant borage in here. So I'm not sure this must have just come from our own compost, but it's quite beautiful. So we decided to leave it. The tomatoes are already flowering and setting some fruit. So I think we're off to a really good start. They never really ripen the way they would outdoors in the sun, but we use a lot of them for preserving. So. You know, that's kind of the drawback. We don't get those really fresh, delicious tomatoes to eat during the summer. Every year I make the mistake of growing nasturtium on these posts that we have here, and it just totally gets wild and crowds out the peppers that we have in this row. This row is all our peppers. That's where they were last year. We've got like 80 in the ground, hot peppers, banana peppers, bell peppers, so many. They look really good. I'm already seeing bell peppers, pretty exciting stuff. So we should have a good year as far as that goes. I did just put some sunflowers back here. These do really well in the high tunnel. I'll show you our ones outdoors. They're about this big. Back to the tomatoes quickly. This is Roma VF and I'm very pleased with it so far. It's super tall. It's next to Beaverton, which is also a Roma, a short season one, but I wasn't super thrilled with it last year. I'm not sure how this one's gonna work out, but I'm gonna see which one I like. We really need those Roma tomatoes for our paste. All right, we have a whole bunch of peppers finishing out this row. We plant our peppers super close 
they do well like that. They never get that much bigger here, so it works for us. I also put a little bit of green beans in the middle in hopes that they'll trellis up. Last year I tried that and it didn't work that well. I can tell something's been munching on them, so I don't quite know what that is. Last year we had a little bit of dry soil too in here and I wasn't watering enough, which also didn't help. This year we decided to make this back area more for plants. We had originally intended to do some sort of heating element, but because we're not really sure if we're gonna do that, we wanted to grow plants. We have extra tomatoes back here. I planted an nasturtium, and this is just the beginnings of how big they get. They get like eight times that size, and you can see they clearly take over where they're at. Right here is one of my favorite beds. It is our basil and more warmer type herbs, I guess. We've got pineapple sage, Cuban oregano, and lemon verbena. Mammoth basil is one of my absolute favorite, most favorite basils. And you can tell I need to prune these or pick them because they're starting to flower right at the top. And these ones I've already picked and they're starting to bush out a little bit more. That one needs to be picked too. But you can see this is actually kind of small. Their leaves get really big, almost the size of your palm. Since we moved inside the high tunnel, apparently it has picked up raining outside. So you probably hear that a little bit. These are our tomatillos and they're doing really well, already flowering last season. It was super short and we just didn't get them quite to where they needed to be right. But I think they're doing really good this year. It looks like we have a leak in our plastic. It's going on its third, third year? <laughs> Maybe it's second year, but we need to go through and tape some of that. What happens is we get ice up there and I have to scrape it, but as it's gotten older, sometimes it actually, the ice will cut the plastic. I wanted to mention that we have a window back here. Just one of the panels opens up and I can unlock it and open it up and then we can turn on a fan. I also do the same thing in the front. If it gets too hot, we open up the door and turn on the fan. So after the tomatillas, I've got our ground cherries and that's new for me this year. I'm very excited about that. They look really good. I'm not sure if they're gonna get much bigger. They're a little bit slower growing. So they're doing good in my opinion. And the ground cherries are really cool. They have husks as well that form around the fruit. Next, I have our eggplants. They're doing pretty good this year. And I put plastic to try to keep the soil warmer. I don't really think eggplants were meant to be grown here, so I'm just being stubborn. I mean, I, sometimes we get eggplants and I really like eggplants, so I have a few and we'll see if it works out for us this year. These are all of our cucumbers, pickling and fresh slicing types. They're doing really good this year. They're off to a really good start. Very excited about that. Last year was not a great harvest and I foresee that this will be a very good harvest. I might add also that these are the type that are meant to be grown in greenhouses. The first year we moved here or the following spring, I tried to grow some that need more pollination. And I found that just stuff in this high tunnel, even if I leave the doors open, it just doesn't get enough pollination, even with having bees nearby. That's the baby cuke forming. Very exciting stuff. This last section is green beans. I grow the pole or the climbing type of green beans and a few random herbs and things like that that I decided to put on the front. I've got some dill in here. The dill always matures much faster in here than outside, so I kind of like to have that going on. The green beans are sprouting up, so it is hard to see them. And we have a volunteer wild raspberry growing in here. <laughs> It has started raining pretty bad out, so we're gonna chill out in here, do some weeding until it gets nicer out there. Eric! <laughs> well, that was a heck of a squall. They come on fast and they leave fast. It looks like the clouds over there now. Got a little bit of a rainbow in the back and I think we can pick up with our garden tour. Don't get wet. It's now 10 p.m. and Eric made us espressos because we usually stay up till midnight because it is so light out. I wanted to show this little temperature gauge I have in here. I keep it in here and this is not very accurate if the sun's beaming down on it but I, I reset it maybe every other day to try and see how low it got in here. It looks like it got to 42, probably in the last two days. The high was 
93. I don't think that was today. I think that was yesterday and it's 86% humidity. This is kind of nice for me to have early season when I'm just making sure the weather's not too cold, when I'm kind of hardening off plants and seeing what can go outside, what can come out from the house into the high tunnel as well. And last year I had one in here and unfortunately water kept dripping on it and it did break it. But I think where I have this one now, it's a good spot. All right, I think we are ready to go onto the outdoors. This is a little bit of a sad corner. This is my mint bed. And you can see there's not very much mint. Mint should overwinter here, no problem. Last year, not all of them came back. I have chocolate mint, spearmint, and I got peppermint this year. Those are the three really hardy ones. I'm going to be rebuilding it kind of like we just did with our asparagus bed. I'm going to build it up and actually probably put a plant over here that truly likes the shade more. This area just even though it's southern exposure because of these structures right here it, it gets a lot of shade so it's not appropriate for the mint. We're probably going to be moving the mint over to the orchard and containerizing it over there. This is the whole asparagus row that we recently redid. We raised them up and I think they look really good. They are there's a lot of spears shooting up and some of them are ferning out. I think next year they're going to do really well. I, this little area over here does get some shade, but pretty much here on gets two thirds to full day of sunshine. One of the hard things about living here and gardening here, it's not a complaint, but because that season is so condensed, even with your perennials, you know, you get your frost and your breakup in April, May, and the ground is still thawing in June. You don't really harvest asparagus until June and back in Oregon we harvested it in February so it was one of the earlier things that you could eat. Um, unfortunately that's just not the case here. In front of me you may have noticed that this area is not covered with straw and that's because we inoculated this compost or in this section of the bed with a shaggy mane mushroom kit. So very exciting stuff. If it all goes well next year we may get some shaggy mane mushrooms out of this little section. These little clumplets in these puddles that are kind of gray and browned. Those are called springers. They may be called springtails. I forget the actual correct name, but they are a moisture loving bug. They cause no harm to the garden. They only mess with the decomposing stuff. So we had a lot of them last year with a really rainy season. We haven't had that much rain this year, but we are starting to get some more. So I'm seeing them show up. We've got our herbs or just some of them in these grow bags parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. The oregano has been overwintering. I have that in our little orchard. And then I just have a few other herbs like dill, cilantro kind of spread throughout the garden. These ones are awesome because we can come here, clip them as they get a little bit bigger. They put on a lot of growth in one year, it's surprising. And we just can can and eat them fresh. So really nice to have those. Again, we only get them for about three months out of the year. This is the whole outdoor garden area. There are nine raised rows. Actually, there's one in the back too that runs along the fence and it tapers as you get closer towards our driveway. So I feel like it's a pretty good amount of space. We're just gonna start on our first row, which is predominantly cabbages. Right up front, we have the OS cross cabbage. If you're familiar with seeing those big, big, big cabbages they grow in Alaska, this is one of them, but it's not gonna be that big. Um, clearly it's gonna be much bigger than the other varieties I have, but this is the first year growing it for us. So I don't quite know how big it's gonna get. She's looking pretty promising so far. We're growing about 40 cabbages. Some of them are my favorite varieties. Some of them are new to me. Last year we had, I believe it was called a, a Swedish midge or a midge, a little fly and it lays like larva and that can eat the center growing point of your plant. This year, I think we've lost two cabbages and one cauliflower. I just checked today, but not bad. Last year we lost quite a few plants to that. We have, a lot of different varieties. You can kind of see the different kinds of leaves. This is a Savoy type. I've got a red cabbage. This is called Fiddler Crot, and you can see it looks more like cauliflower, in my opinion, but it is a cabbage and it's got this torpedo shape. Looks really good. I had to start that one a little bit early. We'll see how that does. Then we just move on to more cabbages. I thought this would be the year for our Napa cabbages. It was not. This is something we've been trying to grow for six, seven years, and I've never successfully gotten one. And I don't think, I mean, they're a cooler season plant, but I think with our light hours, it's almost like we're just doomed. I started them early and they were looking really good. 
but you can tell they flowered. The upside to that is the bees absolutely love them, so I let them flower. It's one of their favorite flowers to get in the garden. I don't know if it's quite that obvious, but we have cabbages of different ages here, and that's because some of them grow a little bit quicker, some of them take longer to mature, and I also don't want all of our cabbages ready right at once. So the way we have them, we should start harvesting in July, and then we should be able to still have cabbage up until September. This is what the midges do. They ate out the growing point of this cauliflower and it's just gonna continue to grow. Its outer leaves will get bigger and bigger and you'll think something is growing in there, but it's not, I assure you of that. So that's, that's not a cool pest. In my opinion, I really like bugs. I feel like this is their home for them, but those ones really, um, really damage the goods. Let's put it that way. Got cauliflower and some Veronica cauliflower and another OS cabbage at the end. This was one of the first rows we planted out here, I believe in early May, and it's one of my favorites. I love watching the brassicas grow because you plant them and they're about this big. You know, you start them from a seed and they're very tiny and then they get just huge. They get so much bigger than this. Cauliflower is also one of my favorite crops and it's sad that we have to harvest it in such a short season. This row is pretty straightforward. It is all of our leeks, shallots, and onions. And I've got bunching onions at the end got more of our storage type in the middle. It's also covered in chickweed. So <laughs> I'll have to go through and get that. Look, that's cilantro. So the cilantro reseeds itself, which is awesome in my opinion. It grows really well on its own compared to when I try to grow it. Another very exciting row for me because I absolutely love onions. Anything that's like a storage crop that adds flavor, garlic, cabbages, beets, stuff like that. Anyways, those are my favorites. So this row I take pretty seriously and I think they're doing really well. We started all of these from seed and they were the biggest starts that we had transplanted of our own. And they were like this big when we, we got them going. I feed them a lot of nitrogen to give them a lot of top leafy growth. And usually we do pretty well. Usually we get nice sized bulbs. I think the biggest we've ever gotten was about that big. The Brussels sprouts in this row are doing quite well and I only planted six because last year we had a plethora and I pretty much had to freeze a lot of them or gift them. You have to start them early here. They require a very long growing time and this is jade so it doesn't require, you know, compared to traditional Brussels, it doesn't actually require that long of a growing period. But I start them indoors and I feed them also a lot of nitrogen. They're just on the heavier end of what they require. Next we have broccoli. Then we're moving down to some radishes. Those are doing quite well. And I timed those just right. Last year I was a little late and we had some bolting. Ooh, this was my favorite. And next we have the giant spinach, which I love. I really like to do this and just compare it to the size of my face because I feel like that's a good, that's a good point to understand how big this spinach is. It gets huge. It's already bolting but that's okay because they still grow really nice leaves and we can come along and harvest them and then when they flower they're pretty moving on from the gigantic spinach we have mustards this whole section is probably i want to say probably eric's favorite section because he loves the oriental asian greens he loves the spiciness of them this year we did fairly well these are two new kinds i'm trying and they i mean they did awesome we just come along and usually cut the whole plant down. I'll leave a few for flowering for the bees. And I just like the way it looks because they have these yellow flowers. But we usually just come along and cut them and make food. We've been coming out here every day, harvesting mustards, harvesting lettuce. These are red and green mustards as well. And then we have mizuna and arugula and some pak choy and baby bok choy. And these are flowering, but it's no big deal. We come in here and we just harvest them and eat them. You can tell actually there's little spots missing. That's where we've already been harvesting. The lettuces are pretty straightforward. I've got some tat soy mixed in with them. Generally speaking, all of this stuff does not like the long light we have. So it will bolt very quickly. Lettuces don't, I don't have an issue with that. And I staggered those as well. We have romaines, their leaves are a little different. We have butter heads, the loose leaf type, just a total variety I love lettuces and the way we grow them is you can't do cut cut and come again so you can just harvest leaves and they'll keep growing but we actually take the whole head that's just the way we found it's the best for us to get through these it will last us probably about two months and it's the freshest you get the the leaves when they're really young and tender this is a tat soy leaf and it's similar to 
kind of similar to spinach. Honestly, I want to say it's more similar to like baby bok choy. So that's where I say that one. It's a lot like, it's a good plant to have. I really like it. These are butterheads, butter crunch. They look really good. And iceberg, we have a few icebergs growing too. That one's already starting to form its head. Visually, this row is quite lovely because you've got the purples and the reds and the, you know, the light green and dark green. Under this plastic is our corn and I keep it under this plastic during the day and at night. Just let you guys see a little peek in there. It's getting quite tall. I'll probably have to take this plastic off soon. Looks really good. Corn is a heavy feeder. It likes lots of nitrogen and it likes water, it likes water a lot. And it also likes its roots or feet warm. So we have that plastic over the corn or over the raised bed. And then we also have this plastic too. Two years of growing corn. The first year it was in the high tunnel. It did really well as far as maturity goes, but it did not pollinate well enough in there. Even with the doors open, fans going, and me kind of shaking the pollen. So that didn't really work very well. Last year, it wasn't long enough of a growing season, so we did not get corn. This year, I'm hoping it turns out well. I researched the varieties and I chose a very short growing corn. And a lot of people grow this one, say it works here. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how it does. Next up we have our zucchini and summer squash and then our winter squashes and pumpkins follow after that. I have the plastic that continues on the row and we just cut little slits where we put the plants. Something sad happened this year. It has yet to happen since we have lived here. Our last frost date is typically like June 1st. However, the last two summers, that wasn't the case. Our last frost was like mid-April maybe in May so it was it was much earlier and this time around I made the mistake of already having our squash out and some of them got hit pretty hard with the frost that we had on 6-1. It kind of caught me off guard but reminded me that it is what it is you know we're gardening here in Alaska and I cannot control the weather sometimes that just happens there in fact there was no forecast saying it was supposed to be that cold I think it said it was going to be 41 and it was 31 <laughs> so quite a bit of a difference. Some of these plants are bigger because they were not affected by that temperature. I know that sounds strange, but I came out here, I was a little surprised about a third, probably about two thirds actually were wilted. And some of them like this one just looked totally fine, which is strange when the ones next to it did not. These ones are totally making a comeback. I don't think it's really gonna work out that well. Winter squash, I need the 90 days. And that's why I started them so early and unfortunately made the mistake of putting them out too early. But I just don't think it's going to be a good winter squash year for us again this year. Last year was, you know, we had a lot of rain and they just, they got like to this point, but they just didn't ripen in time. And when I brought them inside, it didn't work out that well. I also started some extras and planted them, but they're not very big. So I don't think it's going to work out. <laughs> they're still really pretty though. I mean, they vine and they get really big and we get these beautiful flowers. This back row is looking awesome. We've got our hascaps or honeyberries and our raspberries. In fact, I need to prune some of the little suckers because they're getting out of control. We also have a gooseberry at the end and then we have some perennial sorrel, which is really cool. It's this plant, tastes like, tastes like lemon. So it's a perennial and it grows back every year without me even having to try it. It's totally awesome. These are the hascaps and they're doing awesome. They have, they've gotten really tall. We have had them for three years now and you can see all the green, all the light green is actually their growth from this year. The brown is last year's growth. And I mean, they've, they've put on a lot of growth. I think they'll get to about five to six feet. So really awesome. At the end, I have a rugosa rose and she's doing pretty good. I think she's gonna get a lot bigger. I want it to get massive. They get big. So I left this whole area for her. And this was an example of what I'm talking about. Our sunflowers out here are not the same size as the ones in the high tunnel. Well, we made it to the end of the garden. So I'm gonna work my way back to the middle. This is kind of a random area. I put some herbs and things over here. I have perennials. Lovage this year is new for me. Lemon balm came back. Yes, I'm so excited about that. Um, that one came back. Eric planted that there. And we've got borage, cilantro, I think I have anise and some chamomile as well. This is catnip, which is related to mint. Cats go crazy for it, some cats do. And it comes back every year 
we totally got rid of it in here and planted it over in our little flower garden but interestingly enough it actually hasn't grown back over there i'm not sure if it did actually perennialize but in here you can see it definitely perennialized and reseeded itself one good reason for leaving clovers is their blossoms they're awesome for tea have great medicinal properties and i like to think that's why i leave them around i really like the flowers this is the strawberry bed that we redid and we dug up a lot of the plants totally redid it i'm not going to do that in the future i just had to do that because it got out of control and you can see it's doing better now um, most of them have come back i think there's maybe like two or three that don't look like they survived but these look really good i'm going to manage the runners really well this year too this is primarily a root crop row we've got parsnips and carrots sprouting up they look really nice i just weeded it there was a lot of chickweed next we have turnips daikon radish and rutabaga rutabaga is kind of a joke because we grew it one time and eric despises it and i finally wanted to grow it again it's been a little while it actually gets really sweet it's this really big root so i'm really excited to grow it again i've thinned the mustards and the daikons and we have our beets just germinating i'll thin those two once they're a little bit further along i went through and filled in some gaps where they didn't germinate that well but they're looking pretty good I love beets. Love them. I love them raw. They're delicious. And to finish off the row, I have Swiss chard and peas. We've got the climbing kind, and then I have some of the kinds that don't get that tall. The Swiss chard this year, I read something about them bolting if you expose them to too cold of temperatures when they're young, because I've had that happen the last few years. So this year I tried to put them on a little bit later, and we're going to see if that helps. So far, they look pretty good. Something else that's also important about our garden is our electric fence. So we have a few things that could be a problem here. Moose is the main one. I guess you could say birds and snowshoe hares, but really we haven't had an issue at all with those. We don't have a high amount of moose that come through here, but if they do, they will just totally massacre the garden, as you can imagine, much worse than deer. So we really can't even let that be an issue. An electric fence is not something to mess with. In fact, all animals that I know of respect it very well. And that's, that's why we went with that. We've got a little solar panel. We have a lawnmower battery and our charger right here. This is our garlic row. Very excited about this because I love garlic and you have to plant it in the fall here. It goes through the winter, you mulch it very deeply and then you uncover the straw, that's what we use. We uncovered the straw early spring and it starts to emerge. It's really cool to watch. And because it's hard neck garlic, they will send up scapes, which are edible, they're delicious. They taste a lot like garlic. You may see some gaps and that is because not all of them make it Sadly, I think they rot or most likely they rot because the winter, you know, they freeze and then it's wet in the spring. A lot of them did make it and I've got them labeled. We got our garlic from a company based in Washington and I was very happy with the garlic we got from them. This variety is music and I'm very excited about it. It's big, beautiful, big fat cloves. That's the kind of garlic Eric and I like because when we go to make something, we're not using one little tiny clove. We're using like five cloves. So this is a really good garlic for us. And for the garlic this year, I pulled back on the nitrogen. It likes a lot of nitrogen, but I think we have an overabundance of it in here. And I actually added a quite a bit more bone meal for them, for their bulbs. Further down, we have fennel, celery, lots of celery and celeriac. Celeriac forms a bulb above ground. I haven't grown it before, but it forms a bulb above ground that tastes like celery. It's an awesome root crop, I would call that. The potatoes are here. They take about two thirds of this row. Not much to say about them. They're gonna get huge. They get huge here. And I mean, just massive. You can't walk on either side of the row midsummer, but they do really well. That's something Alaska is known for is spuds. This is a more promising looking sunflower. And then we've got our collards. Our collards get huge. The chickens love them. That's why I have four. Eric and I could probably only keep up with just one of those. Then we move on to the kales. We've got a purple rib variety, dazzling blue. It's so pretty. And next to it, we have Toscana and then some of our wild mixtures. I mainly give those to the chickens. To me, those ones have a little more of a bitter flavor. I'm a really big fan. And so is Eric of these Italian kales. We have orc in this bed. I have a green kind. I'm only growing the purple kind, but sometimes we get the green one that shows up. That's a, a spinach type of plant. It's thicker and fuzzy. It's really good. And when it bolts, it's actually still delicious. 
In fact, I don't think it's bolting. I think it's just flowering. That's how that plant grows. Then we have a whole bunch of kohlrabi. So this is another favorite thing for us. There's already bulbs forming. Well, it's about to hit 11 p.m. And I think the sun is just starting to go down. It actually goes down at midnight and comes back up at four in the morning. So it's really awesome. It's just a really cool time of the year, even with lots of rain. We get a lot of rain here in the summer. I hope you enjoyed our garden tour. We're going to be doing more this year. This is just an early one. Everything's putting on just that early growth. It's going to get a lot bigger and it's, it's very early in the season. So we have that short, short season and it's gotta go real quick, real fast. That's also how we have to eat it and start to preserve it. So the canning season is coming up. We both really enjoy gardening. I, I think Eric enjoys it as much as I do. I know he enjoys eating it. We both love cooking food and harvesting it and it's, it's really fun. And I know there's a lot of folks getting into gardening and I think if I had one thing to say to you is just do it and have fun because there's a lot to learn and it's so much is out of your control. I mean, I know it's disheartening with frosts and bugs or just, it didn't work, you know, something bolted, but it takes years to learn and I'm still learning a bunch. Every year is different here. So we are just trying to enjoy what we have. On that note, if you don't have a garden or any plants, I would encourage you to plant something because it is awesome to see it grow and it's really fun for children to see that kind of stuff too and harvesting it. That's my favorite time is harvest time.